three. This one's not good. The rebound on a great block out by Greasel. Vandermel's got the ball. Four to nothing run to start the second half. Wilcher drives the basketball, splits a double. What a play! Wilcher, what a fantabulous play! There's our play of the game. Wow, what a finish by C.J. Wilcher. And the first time tonight, the crowd is on their feet. A little 6-0 run to start the second half. Kaiser, left low block, guarded by Stewart. Knock away and a steal for Kendall Moriarty. Here come the Huskers with 106 to go in the second quarter. There it is. Trailing by 11. Three ball, Lonnie Stewart all alone. You! Betcha! Off the steal and assist from Kendall Moriarty. Timeout, Kim Barzerico. And here come the Husker crowd. To Jazz Shelley. Throw it back. Jazz has a double team. Throws it deep left side. Callan Hake for three. You betcha. Greasel bring it across the timeline. How about a couple of quick baskets here? Down 10. Deep left corner. Jamarcus Lawrence three. Got it. Nothing but that swishola of CBA three for Jamarcus Lawrence. At top, Hybe has it. Huskers looking for a road win over a top five team. Hybe driving and scoring down the left lane line. That was classic Sam Hybe. Yeah, good pace by Sammy. Nebraska answers. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome. It's another night of sports on a big day today. Big day for a lot of high school athletes. I follow a couple of high schools on Twitter and saw a lot of student athletes signing various letters of intent for a lot of sports. Obviously for us tonight, big focus on football as Nebraska added five more high school players. A couple of them just visited Lincoln a couple of days ago. Now they're going to be Cornhuskers moving forward. So a uh, fun time, exciting time uh, for student athletes. And oh, uh, the coach met with the media. We're going to hear some clips coming up here uh, later on in the hour. Pretty upbeat, but I also think pretty excited now to kind of flip the calendar and get to learn his current football team. Absolutely. But I did want to go back to the ticker. Are you sure Tom Brady is retiring? Are you sure? I, I think he is. <laughs> okay. I think he is. All right, back to Husker News. Yeah, no, I mean, I um, I think obviously they hit the ground running, and boy, they were grinding. They traveled all over the country. They had recruits in and visits in nonstop. You had coaches that were flying in on the same day as they were hosting official visits here. I mean, they were nonstop. Boy, I was dizzy trying to catch up with them on, and follow them on social media and Twitter, but I think they're glad. They're not done, obviously. They're going to keep continuing to grind and, and find those hidden jewels in the next class in 2024. They're already full speed ahead on, on 2024 and 2025, and they'll have camps and all of that, but I do think for the time being, at least, while you can't have recruits on campus and, and there's a slow period to get to get out and recruit, I do think they're absolutely excited to get to know better this team. They've already been spending a lot of time with these guys, I know, in the have been meeting with them and trying to get to know them, but to really go all in on this current team, I think they're really excited to get to do that. You know, he made he talked about. It. He goes, I've watched the my assistant coach's press conferences. Uh, that was interesting. So I'm like, this guy doesn't miss much. I mean, we've been kind of they've been slowly rolling them out. Last week it was or earlier this week it was Coach Foley and Coach Knight, and he goes, I, I watched Ed's press conference, and he goes, you know, Ed talked about hitting all these schools. He goes, that's what we do. Yeah. He goes, that's not. That's not – everybody's giving us credit. He goes, that's what we ought to be doing. He said that's a bare minimum. Right. I mean, and he – you know, he said thank you to the media that are, you know, hyping us up and we appreciate it, but that's what we're supposed to do. And that's the bare minimum what we're supposed to do. And, and Ed Foley loves to do that. that. That's the thing, too, is that, you know, I think maybe some people think, oh, well, that's their job and they have to do that. But I think these coaches genuinely enjoy being on the road and going to meet and talk with these high school coaches. And I think they really also take a lot of pride in finding those diamonds in the rough that I just talked about that maybe a lot of people didn't recruit. Maybe the basketball star like uh, Charles. Uh, Jeremiah Charles. Jeremiah Charles. Mm -hmm. almost said Jefferson Charles. Jer Jeremiah Charles, who was a basketball star, scored 22 points with Matt Roll in attendance. Maybe a guy like that, maybe a Bryce Turner who was a track star. You know, just these hidden jewels. I think they take a lot of pride in that. And then getting them here and developing, you just heard, you, I think you played a sound bite about him, you know, finding those guys that are super athletic and talented and like football. And let's see if we can find a place to fit for them. I think they really enjoy doing that. And, and that, they love the grind. Like, this is a staff that loves the grind. I'm thinking he might be watching our show right now. Hey, we I better, we better behave. I said it the other night. You know what? His wife was at the Huskers event today. The Huskers. Cool. Uh, she came in to attend that. There were a lot of awesome women that were in that attendance. But, you know, I was joking the other night that I think he's given um, the big uh, Go Big Red guy who's at every single event, every single time the doors are open here in Lincoln for 
any sport. He, I mean, he hits up three and four times sporting events a day. I think Matt Rule's giving him a run for his money. And I told him that the other day at the women's game. I said, hey, Coach Rule is giving you a run for the money. But, you know, I, I've also noticed he talked about this in his press conference, too, about showing up and going to a tennis match yep. or all these other sports. I've been out to men's games, women's games, gymnastics, all, you know, all these other events, and I have seen a lot more football players in attendance, and it means a lot to these programs. I know they're having a little friendly competition and, and encouraging guys to get out and support because it does mean a lot, and it's part of that family. You know, there's the family feel within the coaching staff, but then there's that family feel within the athletics department that is just so important to this coaching staff, and so, you know, I think they're, they're really encouraging their, their athletes, their players. Get out there and support those other athletes because they support you. He's setting a standard. This is what we expect you to do. You're here, yes, to play football, yes, to get your degree, but also you're part of the Husker athletic community. And so go back women's tennis when they played at the Dillon Center the other day. They've been at basketball. They've been at gymnastics. I'm sure they've been uh, to wrestling matches that have happened in April. I'm sure they were there Sunday at the Devaney Center, a bunch of them, when Husker wrestling uh, battled Wisconsin. So I think he's trying to set the standard uh, for these guys. If you're part of this program, we expect you to do X, Y, B, Z, all these different things if you want to be a part of this program. Absolutely. I mean, and it starts at the top, right? It's hard to ask, especially for someone new coming in, which it's obviously easy to buy into what he's selling, as we've seen. And I think a lot of people would run through a brick wall after hearing him talk. But it is a lot easier when you're a new guy, a new face coming in, the new leader of the program, and you're asking these guys to do something. Boy, it's a whole lot easier to fall in line when you're seeing the head man, the head on to the guy that's asking you to do all that. He's there himself. He's yeah. sitting up there. He was a uh, him and Coach Foley were at, at the top row of the swimming and diving meet the other day. You know, they're, they're literally everywhere. When they're not out recruiting, when they're here in town, most of the time, if there's a sporting event happening, you will find somebody from this coaching staff, a lot of times Coach Rule, in attendance, which makes it a lot easier for these young guys, young men, to fall in line and, and follow the lead of their leader. We'll play some more of the highlights of his press conference. There was a lot in there earlier today. It went about 33 minutes today with this press conference, so we'll play you some of that coming up here in a little bit. We did not have a show last night. Men's basketball played at Illinois, and, and Jessica, I thought they maybe played about as well as they could. Now, the turnovers, they got to clean that up, but from the strategy, the ability to hang in the game with Illinois on the road, there was a lot of good things in that game. You're talking about a completely different defensive strategy that these guys are now doing. They're playing a zone. Yep. They were, they were defending, you know, man-to-man. -man that was their identity, and now they're completely having to change that up. Foul trouble. Derek Walker, that's what was impressive to me, is that they were right there in that game, and most times, even when they were full strength, if Derek Walker was in foul trouble, they would have trouble competing with teams. But the fact that, you know, he was in foul trouble and they still fought Sam Griesel, played a heck of a Great first game. half, you Great know, game. entire game, but, the, boy, that opening uh, series for him, boy, he was so impressive. He was unstoppable. So, um, yeah, I mean, I thought... Boy, they, you just got to be so proud of the way they keep going out and fighting, just completely shorthanded. And have, I think any, any country or any program in the country would have a lot of struggles dealing with two starters of the caliber of uh, Emmanuel Bandamel and Juwan Gary go down. But the fact that they're, keep, they're not the one in the towel, they're going to keep going out there and fighting. And a lot of great experience. C.J. Wiltshire played better yesterday. He did. Um, so, you know, a lot of great experience for some of these young players to grow. And, hey, they're being thrown to the fire, and they're going to have to mature really quickly. I did see Emmanuel Bandemel leaving uh, the Devaney today, and he's in good spirits. And I, I asked him, hey, can you come on the show sometime? Because I know, um, boy, he's meant a lot to Husker Nation, and this Husker Nation has meant a lot to him in the short period that he's been here, and he has agreed to come on sometime. So hopefully we'll get him in studio soon. It was encouraging to see Blaze get as many minutes last night as he had. He's really played in one game since that Queens game right before Christmas. He gave us three or four minutes, I think, against Ohio State a couple of weeks ago. But he played considerably more minutes last night. Hopefully that ankle's better. Gives Nebraska a rim protector when Derek's not on the floor. He can rebound. I thought he did a pretty good job of that. So that was encouraging to get somebody back that can go into that rotation. Oh, my goodness, yes. Just, I mean, again, they've been just so distraught with injury after injury and they've just been dealing with so much adversity so to get another body back like blaze you're talking about a kid that was 
very, very highly recruited. A lot of people wanted him, and he was expected to come in and be able to provide a huge impact on the defensive end, protecting the rim, and um, you know at least defending inside and um, with his size and ability to block shots and just alter shots. And so to get him back, absolutely massive, especially with the guys down that they have. Huskers back home Sunday to play Penn State. Uh, Sunday afternoon at PBA. All right, here's what we have on the program. Some Coach Rural clips from the press conference here in a couple of minutes. Demetrius Bell, one of the five that inked with the Huskers earlier today. He's a wide receiver from the Nashville area. Jessica caught up with him. We're going to play that interview for you. And then hour two, today is National Girls and Women's in Sports Day. Jessica will have a full hour of great stuff for you. They had a big event at the Devaney Center earlier today. We'll have some of the highlights of that for you in hour number two. And, and as always, phone lines, text lines open for you, 402-413-2400. Also time to tell you that First Interstate Bank built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com. Member FDIC. Let's head to the phones before we take our first break. John and Lincoln's been hanging on. Good evening, John. Hi. Uh, I'm in my late 70s. And my fondest memory of sports was going with my parents to watch Nebraska basketball. And um, I'm glad you're bringing up the injuries and everything that you were, you know, that you're saying. And I think the situation with our basketball coach is much different than what we had with our football program. And I just hope that people are willing to hold on for another year. I know that uh, the athletic director has said to keep the coach, he needs a winning season. But I think there's a lot more that goes into this season than winning. I think if you look at the coach going back through his whole career, he's the type of person we want with the program. I'm wondering if you think it turns out that he does not finish the season. There's still a little bit left with the winning season. Do you think he'll be retained as our coach uh, going on for next year? Yeah, John, I, thanks for the call. I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's Trev Albert's call. Now, you know, he did do a restructure with Coach Hoiberg after last season. He said they put in place some metrics. They did not publicize what those metrics were. Uh, so I don't know the thought process of that. I've not talked to Trev about his thoughts about this. Uh, I think it certainly will be looked at by Trev in the next month, kind of analyzing how Fred is handling a tough situation right now with those starters that are hurt and out for the season. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think you got to analyze all that. That's all fair game for Trev to analyze and look at, and I know he will. Absolutely. I mean, he's going to think about it and figure out what's what's best and what's right and um can you continue to move forward and but, but bottom line trev alberts wants to win you know he's yep. a competitive guy he wants all of these uh all of these programs to win so you know if he feels that fred hoiberg and company can can be that moving forward then that he'll he'll stick with him you know but um if not he'll evaluate it and see what's best for the future but i think um he's been really proud of the way that this program this staff has fought and stuck together and i mean you know we we've talked a lot about it over the last year he had conversations with scott frost he had conversations with fred hoiberg fred hoiberg made changes to his staff he brought in almost a completely new coaching staff and um you know changed some things and brought in some transfers and they gosh they just were dealt so many tough blows Derek walker missed the first half you said it what were the games the total amount of games Ten. That they've played with their full roster. And they were seven and three in the ten. Yeah. So I mean the plan was in place and looked like it was gonna work. Injuries, hey, it's part of sports every every But I mean, not women's I mean, basketball. How many people have it. injuries like this, I know. you know? Yeah, I mean Amy's dealing without Allison Widener, John Cook dealt with a Kennedy or being hurt all year. You've got to overcome all that. But yeah, that you have to factor that in when you analyze where Fred is with the program right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it was absolutely, you, you've seen flashes that this program and or this team was absolutely improved. It was a better product. I think we can all agree about that. We've heard fans say it. We've heard Coach Hoiberg say it about how they wanted to put forth a product that fans were proud to come and watch and I think everybody has it has enjoyed what this team how they've come out and fought I mean look what they did to Purdue and they've they've just they've played so there's been some flashes of some really good basketball and it just stinks so badly that they were dealt some of the blows that they dealt with some of the injuries and I think even this team would have been able to battle with just one of those guys out I think they still would have given some teams some hard 
fights down the stretch here with with Emmanuel or Juwan, but losing both, both of them is just really, really tough to overcome. John, appreciate the call. Our Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you were looking for with Woodhouse. In fact, we'll have Coach Hoiberg on for a segment tomorrow night here on Sports Hunting. Back to play some clips from the press conference from earlier today with head football coach Matt Rural. That's coming up next. Hi, it's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. And I'm Amy Just from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, listen, HuskerExtra.com and the Husker Extra mobile app have the best coverage of Nebraska sports. Our reporting team shares features and analysis of all Husker sports, along with the latest recruiting news and more. Plus, Husker Extra subscribers have access to our exclusive podcast, The Showdown, where we share our latest insights and expectations. Go to HuskerExtra.com or search Husker Extra in your app store. Download and subscribe today. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. And Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. Husker students on the debate team and Bateman competition public relations team earned national championships this past year, marking a first for each program. The debate team claimed victory with one of the youngest teams in the country, while the Bateman competition public relations team won their championship by building a PR campaign for the Lymphoma Research Foundation. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line, text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. My husband and I love to live in Nebraska. It's the good life. We always vacation here. Love those Nebraska state parks. We love to eat here. Where are you going to get a better steak? And we love to play here, especially Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It has a $50,000 starting jackpot, drawing seven days a week, and all the proceeds go back to our state. Hey, honey, this weekend, let's buy some Nebraska Pick 5 tickets, go to a state park, and grill some steaks. Like our first date. <laughs> I'm no amateur. Top prize odds, one in 501,000. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Shelly has the ball, going to drive, delivers deep left side, Sam Hybe alone for three, you betcha! Hey Husker fans, tune in tomorrow for an evening full of Nebraska basketball. Fred Hoiberg makes an appearance in studio from 6 to 7 p.m. for the Nebraska Men's Basketball Show on Sports Nightly. Then at 7 p.m., Matt Cotney and Jeff Grish will be on the call as the women's basketball team takes on Michigan State. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red! When you're a fan, you wear your team's jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. After a win, your world glistens. Lose, and the hurt permeates your soul. 
You'll always have a place with us in the Cox Fan Zone, where everyone can play and connect with other fans in a big group hug. See, in the Fan Zone, you're not some crazy fan. Your home. Hey, Husker fans, this is Greg Sharp, voice of the Huskers. Say Fan Zone into your Contour Voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit cox.com slash fan zone. Go Huskers. Hey, everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, it is a what day is this? Tuesday. Ooh. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. We're already in Wednesday. It's yes. like two days to me. Hump day. We're already headed downhill toward the weekend. <laughs> uh, big day today. Matt Rural met with the media for the first time since right before Christmas, and he covered a lot of topics. We're going to start off with, he got asked about welcoming back to the team Xavier Betts and Isaiah Garcia Castaneda. Here was his response. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't go in the transfer portal on me. They had done that before, so I had no real issue with that. Um, like I said, I'm going to take everything on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, Jeff Nixon, who, who worked with me, um, was a high school teammate of mine, worked with me, and his son played on the team, called me about Xavier. I didn't know who Xavier was. Um, and so I talked to you know, I just met with him. I love Xavier Betts. And I don't love Xavier Betts because of who he is as on the football field, because that's what's wrong <laughs> when people think you only love him. I love who he is as a person. I like getting to know him. I like that... You know, I, I, I appreciate he texted me happy birthday yesterday. Okay, that means something to me. Like, so I like who he is as a guy. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm anxious to see him kind of get back on the football field and do well in the classroom. So I'm anxious to not just give him a chance, but to be an advocate for him. You know, like my son's 18. I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to figure out what he wants to do for the rest of his life. I want him to go places where they has people who they don't entitle him, they don't enable him, but they advocate for him. So we'll do that for Xavier. And then. You know, I, I, you know, Isaiah, he, he just reached out, and I was like, yeah, let's give him a chance. Like, give everybody a chance, and then go through the spring, and then uh, people are going to see the standards and how we do things, and they'll either decide that they want to do it or not. But um, you know, they hadn't gone on the portal on me, so I, it really didn't affect me. Well, those are two guys that if we're talking speed, 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 that this staff will absolutely love the speed, especially Xavier Betts. I mean, wow. I, I love that answer, though, about giving him a chance and, and liking him as a person and texting him happy birthday. I love that. And, you know, I think Xavier probably stepped away from it and realized how much he missed it and what and loves it and wants to get back to it. And, and they're going to give him a shot. And that's all that I think both those guys can ask for. And, and they got to go earn it. And I think both of them probably, will, after what they went through, will probably come in and work their tails off. They both have proven they can play at this level. Absolutely. They both have made plays. Xavier more here than, than Isaiah, but that catch Isaiah made not in Dublin that was, unbelievable. was phenomenal. And he did had a great career going at New Mexico State. So these are guys that have proven they can play college football. Well, and Isaiah was a guy that caught your eye at, in practice back in the spring. Yep. And so, you know, I, I just, I think he's a guy that just got overlooked. He got doubted, and then I think he got down on his confidence yeah. some, and he was trying so hard. I think he, once he got a Power 5 offer to come back here, he's trying so hard, probably tried too hard, and then got down on his confidence. But, you know, he absolutely has the talent, and I think both of those guys absolutely have the skill set, the tools of the, what they are looking for in wide receivers. Also, this staff found a little niche into Athens, Georgia. They have added three Georgia Bulldogs to the program. Here's the coach talking about getting some assistance maybe from some guys that he's known through the coaching ranks that have a tie to Georgia. Yeah, obviously they played till late, so they had a, they had a limited window because those guys all went into the portal after, except for Eric, after it was over with. But yeah, you know, Fran, um, you know, as I get older, guys who've coached for me now go on. Like, you know, Fran was, 
you know, a GA, then a position coach, and now he's really one of the top assistants in the country, should be a head coach, and will be a head coach. And, um, you know, as guys were going in, hey, coach, this is a guy that fits you. He kind of knows how I am, the way I want to do things, the process that we'll want to have, the character of the guys that we want, the work ethic. So he was able to tell me about them and then also tell them about us and what we're doing here and then kind of let us recruit from there. Um, a guy like even like a guy like Eric, you know, Jake Peets, who I worked with, you know, was a Nebraska alum. Um, he had had him at LSU, so or had gotten there as he was leaving LSU. So even even guys that had played with some of these guys who played, I coached in the NFL, were able to kind of speak on them. So I think a big thing is as you bring transfers in, is why are they transferring? Um, why do they want to be here? And I think all those guys, to me, um, I mean, you know, they're they're really good players and they have a chance to help us, but they also have the right mindset to play, you know, at Nebraska. Jessica, he referenced Eric Gilbert. That's the tight end who started at LSU, played some games at LSU, then transferred to Georgia and really never got on the field for the Bulldogs. But boy, some of the highlights that he had at LSU, he's 6'6", 260. And here he's talking more about Eric Gilbert and what maybe some expectations for him are coming into the program. He's as talented a player as there is, okay? So he's, he's, he's a player. What we want to do is, like with all of our players, you know, I want him in, in 10 years to say his life is better for having played for us at Nebraska, right? That's all I care about with all these guys. So um, what that means for him, I'm just getting to know him. Um, I want him to have elite success in the classroom. I want him to go be involved in the community. I want him to have great relationships, and I want him to go play well in football. Um, if, Eric, if Eric gets on the field for us, uh, the football for him comes naturally, but we're going to push him to be the best that he can be. And so I think there's a lot of talent there, but with a lot of these guys, there's a lot of talent. You know, we just have to we just have to harness it and help them develop it, uh, get them on the field, get them to trust us, um, and then uh, turn them loose. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been fascinating to see the Georgia pipeline <laughs> to Nebraska, but I think one thing that we're seeing is I think a lot of those Georgia guys, you know, when they went on their initial recruiting visit what they felt at home that felt like they could be a part of it george i think it translates here just the expectations the culture um i think it, it ties and then that you know trusting somebody that sends them nowadays it's just so hard because everybody's giving you the same spiel so when you trust somebody that knows that but yeah and i think the development part of it is just absolutely we hear that over and over again and what i think is neat too is some of these players that we're talking to that's what they're saying too is that they believe that they're going to come here and get developed so i think all the he he uh has so many different points that he hits on and in his sound bites that i'm like i gotta hit on that and I that know. and that i know there's, a, he <laughs> there's packs, like so many nuggets in he, that he packs a lot in doesn't he uh-huh Wipe my chin, though, thinking about having Eric Gilbert and Thomas Fedoni on the field at the same time. Those were, when they both were in high school coming out, they were like the top two tight ends in the country. We have them both. Yeah. This could get good. Well, and Ismail, Ismail, the he's not tight end that either. we cited, and he's so green and has a lot of upside, too. So for him to get to come in and be a part and compete, he's, he's going to grow tremendously, too. So um, I think, you know, for losing lost Austin Allen and then you had um, Travis Volklek in and out and so I think that was a position that they needed to, to get some bodies in and because Fedoni obviously has the talent he was highly recruited but can he stay healthy and can he get back to where he is and I think he absolutely will do everything he can to get out there but they needed some bodies in that room and I think they addressed that for sure they put Fedoni in one of those little weight lifting videos that they tweeted out yesterday I think those those are all prescripted who they want to Oh, I, I think they absolutely let, are letting the guys know who to feature, who to highlight. Absolutely, which you should. You should yeah. point out guys who are doing a good, some good things, and Fedoni was in one of those shots. And taking care of business all around. Again, that's the mm -hmm. big thing with this staff. It's not just about performing on the football field. It's are you taking care of business in all other areas of your life? Well, we all know this group is over the number scholarship-wise. And coach was asked about that. And is there, are there any other holes on the roster as he sees it that he would like to add more depth? Here's the coach. Sometimes I hear people talk. I think we, have, we all have to be very careful about talking about, well, they're really bad at this position because these kids are still 18 to 22. They're not NFL players, right? So they're developing. So I, I can't comment on positions yet. Um, because I haven't coached them. You know, I think after the spring, like I said, I, I think there's probably a lot of guys. Like I have two guys that played for me in college that are playing in the Super Bowl, Hassan Reddick, and he's going he's gonna to play edge, what they call edge now, outside backer, DN. He didn't come to college as an outside backer. I have Sean Bradley, who unfortunately is on IR right now, but he's a linebacker. He, he wasn't a linebacker in high school. So 
some of the real magic that I think good staffs do is they find the right position for players. Like, hey, you know what? You're a good DN, but I think you could be a great uh, tackle. You're a, hey, you're a good outside backer. I think you could be a great fullback maybe. So I think that's part of our magic. In terms of scholarship numbers at positions, we're still not where I would want to be on the O-line. You know, like, you know, I'd like to always be at 16 scholarship offensive linemen. Watching some of the non-scholarship O-linemen move, they look like scholarship O-linemen at uh, places I've been, but I haven't seen them play, so I have to watch. But that's one area probably to me. We're probably, you know, obviously we're over on scholarships right now. Uh, there's so many new rules now that allow you to do some things to get to get there, so we'll, we'll work on that as we go. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've kind of remade the team. Um, and I think the team that's here, they're remaking themselves in the weight room right now. A lot of guys look significantly different to me and just after a couple. That's encouraging to see that he's already seen progress being made in the weight room. All right, last thing from the coach from today. The coaches are now here. They, they can't go out on the road again until after spring football. So they cannot leave the state. They have to stay in the house. And so maybe they can take a deep breath. So the coaches ask, can you take a deep breath now that you don't have to travel for a while? We're in a sprint, right? Coach, Coach Paterno used to always tell us to run scared, and uh, we're we're going to sprint. Like you know, we're 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 not we're not taking a break. Um, now the focus is just purely on the guys that are here. And um, as I said, the, there's a lot of there's a lot of winners on this team. There's a lot of guys that I need to do a great evaluation on to help them be the most successful they can be. Hey, should I play this position or that? What should I do? Um, so. Uh, I gave the coaches a couple days off here, um, but you know I'll, I'm here right now. I'm, I'll be here all week, and we move here and out. And we're gonna we're working on 2024s, we're working on 2025s, but most importantly, to your point, working on this team and getting ourselves ready to 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 be in a good place for spring. He he referenced several different times, Jessica, that he likes the guys on this football team. That the little interaction he's had, I think it's probably more than we think, but that he likes what he sees. Well, I mean, are you surprised? I mean, we've been saying that. There are some guys on this team that we absolutely adore. We, they've been great people to work with and deal with and have fought and have been just, I mean, a great ambassadors. And even despite all the adversity, they keep coming out and fighting and they're fun. Boy, I mean, I've had, I've laughed so much with some of these guys. So I, I'm not surprised that he's that this staff has liked and, and taken a liking to a number of these guys already here. The fact that that team could go out and beat the Iowa Hawkeyes when Iowa was playing for division title says a lot about the character of these guys. I think Matt Rule's picked up on that in his short time in Lincoln. All right, really good stuff there. Buckle up, folks, and put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. When we come back, we're going to hear from one of the newest members, one of the five high school student athletes that signed with the Huskers today, Demetrius Bell. That's straight ahead. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time again for some Nebraska farm facts. For Nebraska soybean farmers, sustainability is a way of life. 97% of farms are family owned and 95% are participating in conservation programs and using sustainable practices. And they have significant sustainability goals by 2025. 10% more energy efficiency, 10% less land, and 25% less soil erosion. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Shelly has the ball, going to drive, delivers deep left side, Sam Hivey alone for three. You betcha! Hey, Oscar fans, tune in tomorrow for an evening full of Nebraska basketball. Fred Hoiberg makes an appearance in studio from 6 to 7 p.m. for the Nebraska Men's Basketball Show on Sports Nightly. Then at 7 p.m., Matt Cotney and Jeff Creech will be on the call as the women's basketball team takes on Michigan State. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red! Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. Your story, it lives in River City, where you can enjoy a metropolitan vibe and a small town feel, where we set the standard for service and looking out for one another, where there's so much more than steak in our thriving food scene. Your story is the story of Omaha, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's helping you keep up with the Cornhuskers or creating the content you crave, and here in the Omaha World Herald is where it comes to life. Omaha World Herald, where your story lives. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, back with you. Wednesday night, Sports Island here on the Huskers Radio Network, National Signing Day. Part two today, Huskers added five high school student-athletes to their football roster, one of those being Demetrius Bell, a wide receiver from Nashville, Tennessee. Jessica caught up earlier with Demetrius. Excited to be joined by Demetrius Bell, one of the newest Huskers in the 2023 signing class. Well, welcome. How's it going? Going good. You're from Tennessee. What do you think about this weather? It's not... I'm used to it a little bit. It's like in Tennessee, the woods are bipolar. Like 
like one day it's hot, one day it's 30. So I'm used to it. Well, your first time in Nebraska, what have you thought? What has the, the visit been like so far? It's been great. Uh, I can tell by like the culture here, everybody loves Nebraska football. So great. Out of, yeah, wide receiver out of Tennessee, Antioch, Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. um, so tell us about your recruiting process when you started talking to this Nebraska coaching staff. What made you interested in, in playing for them? Um, Coach Stat, um, I got a good relationship with him. So he came over here. He called me immediately. So I just, I just took off from there. What did you like about what, what he had to say? Just come here and ball. That's it. You, we've heard a lot about how they like speed and, and they need some help at, at wide receiver. How much has that uh, appealed to you? Because you're a fast guy, right? And, mm -hmm. and also being able to help at that wide re uh, receiver position. How much does that appeal to you? How much do you like that? A lot because I can just come in, compete, and play from the start. Like Just come in, compete, make the program better. What uh, tell fans if they're listening in and they've never seen your film? What do you like out on a football field? Unguardable <laughs> speed, feet, everything. Y'all gonna look. I, I can do it all. Go up and get it on somebody's head. Like I'll run you, make you miss everything. Why is the speed so important? I mean, we, we hear this coaching staff talk about how how good that is and how much they want that. Why do you think that's so important for an offense? Uh, because when you got someone with speed, you can get them the ball different ways, screens, deep. Like you just give them the ball and let them work. When you hear that as a wide receiver, how much do you love that? How much is that something that you want to come play for when you, you hear the speed and we want to get you the ball? Yeah, I love it a lot. <laughs> well, you play both defense and offense, right? Yes, ma'am. How much has that helped you in your development as a football player playing both sides? Uh, a lot, because by me playing DB, I understand what DB is going to do. Like, so that helped me a lot. So you like playing offense better, though? You like being wide oh, receiver? Most definitely. I got to make plays. I'm a playmaker. <laughs> what do you like so much about the offensive side of the ball? Uh, I just love making plays and making the crowd just go bonkers. That's just, I'm a playmaker. Love it. What's been the, re the recruiting process been like for you? Because, you know, sometimes it can be stressful. It's a lot, and you're talking to a lot of different people. What's it been like going through it for you? Uh, it's been, like, I blew up, like, I got 20 offers in like less than three months, so it was wild. Like it was wild. So I just been talking to everybody and stuff, just trying to build connections. Why did you come on the scene so late? Why? What happened where you blew up like that? Uh, the, I say the school I was at, we don't get like looked at that much. Like, so I, I I say it was that. I just had to go out, compete at camps and stuff to get my name out there more. It's every. Call it or every football player's dream to play collegiately and at, at, on a stage like Nebraska and the Big Ten. How special was it for you when you, you started getting those offers and, and you got the offer from Nebraska? Oh, it felt good. It's like uh, my hard work is finally paying off. Why do you feel like this would be a good fit for you? Uh, the coaches here, like they, they, they care a lot about their players and development. So I just want to come to a place with brotherhood. Everybody here is a brotherhood. So I want to come here and just be great. Outside of football, what's important to you about a, a school and a program in Nebraska in particular? Uh, just relationships. Like, I'm going to be far away from my family, so I got to build that, have that relationship with the coaches and stuff. So that's me. You talked about earlier how your, your high school didn't get seen a lot. Mm -hmm. What would be your message to a kid that might be listening in that is at a school that, that isn't getting seen either, how they can overcome that and, and get to where you got to? Uh, don't let it take a toll on you. Just continue to put in hard work and focus on make sure your books are straight, make sure your grades are straight, and it's going to come. You just got to get your, make yourself available, put yourself out there so people can see who you are. Well... Demetrius, I appreciate your time. You want to give us a Go Big Red for the fans for the first time? Yeah, Go Big Red. Oh, no. <laughs> I loved his swagger, his confidence, but not cocky. I think he's going to come in and do his absolute best to try to get on the field. I think they're have a hard time keeping him off of it. That offer sheet's pretty impressive. Yes. Bama, Georgia, Ole Miss. I mean, those are legit programs that all wanted him to be part of their program. Absolutely. And and he's confident and feels like he can make an impact right away and loves making plays and whatever he can do. So I uh, can't wait. There, there's going to be some fun competitions playing out there oh, at wide receiver. No doubt. And also with the defensive backs. Like, right. Those are going to be some battles that are going to be fun to watch. Sure will be. That's what I'm like. Sign me up for a seven-on-seven seven game at the spring game. 
Think so let's play a couple quarters of full football and then play a couple quarters of seven on seven and let to... the wide receivers and DBs battle it out. I think you need to run that up the flagpole. See what I those might. Because how, how awesome would that be to That'd see be those guys incredible. go at it? Those DBs and wide receivers. That's a lot of talent in those rooms. No doubt. Good interview. Good to have Demetrius part of the Husker family. Folks, buckle up. Put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. But we want you to be a part of the program with your phone, right? 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. We're back to a wrap-up hour one next. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High Bee stores, where right now kids can eat free. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402 413 2400 with your Husker thoughts. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So, how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Folks, check out the Husker Extra Mobile app from the team at Lincoln Journal Stars. The best place for everything Husker sports. Search the app store for Husker Extra and download it today. Back with our final segment of our 1402-413-2400. I was on Twitter this morning and all of a sudden up popped this video from one Tom Brady sitting on a beach in Miami telling us that he's done. I mean, I'll believe it when it, the season starts next year and he's not him. on the field. I believe him. I think he knows. I, I do think probably he was humbled a little bit yep. after this year. I, I mean, it wasn't easy. But, you know, at least he knows because maybe if he didn't come back and um you know would have been lingering in the back of his mind but at least he knows now for a fact like all right it's done what has he meant to the sport do you think oh my gosh i mean Seven so Super much Bowls? wow so much six with the patriots one with the bucks i mean he's would you say he's the most popular guy in the nfl right yes po most well known like yes. Obviously, and then I just I think what was he drafted like seventh round? Yeah, just the he was the great story of quarterback that nobody really knew what what he could do, and then becomes the goat. I mean, yeah, I've and not a great athlete. I mean, not from the standpoint of he's not quick, he's not fast, pretty tall, he's a pretty good size guy. And I do think it was great for his legacy to go do it at Tampa. Agreed. Because, you know, uh, uh, with the Patriots, obviously had a lot of great talent around him, Bill Belichick. So was it Bill Belichick's doing? Was it Tom Brady? Obviously, it was a combination of both. 
But I think for his legacy and for when you look back, the fact that he was able to go do it at Tampa after that was... I think that cemented his place as the, the best. I don't think, and I know he has a contract on the table from Fox, I don't see him doing broadcasting. I don't think he's going to want to do that. I don't think he'll like it much. I don't think he would like it. But, you know, it's kind of like going back to, you know, submitting, submitting your legacy. I think that's why Kevin Durant felt like he had to leave Golden State and go do it somewhere else, too. You know, I mean, it's, can you do it with Durant the, shouldn't have left Oklahoma City. No, he shouldn't have. He should not have. Like, don't get me started on, on that rant. But, you know, I think that's where, okay, you did it with all these great players and then, you know, go do it there. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think he's absolutely... Um, the goat, and I don't. I just don't see him in the bar- broadcast booth. I don't see him being Tony Romo. No, I don't. I mean, those guys, they do Sunday games. They fly usually into the city they're playing at on Friday. They have all day meetings Saturday. Then you do the broadcast, and you go home and you redo it again. I just don't think he would want to go through that. I just don't. Th- I don't see him wanting because I think he's big picture thinking. I think he wants to do stuff. Maybe he wants to write scripts for Hollywood or whatever he wants to do. I think he's got a business mind. I think he'll get involved in a lot of that or stuff. Yeah, I mean, he has a production company already. He's already got so many things in the works, absolutely. I mean, I think he's definitely more forward-thinking that. And Crypto King said he will be a coach someday. No, he will not be a coach. I do not think he will be a coach. I think he'd be more likely to be a broadcaster than a coach. Agreed. He's not the coaching type. No. A lot of times, and this goes across all sports, the better you are, the worse coach you would be. And think about think about the really great coaches work amazing athletes yeah but they studied the game as they made their way through he'll be missed the great uh, tom brady uh, career is over all right hour one of the books coming up next hour jessica's going to steer you through a big day national girls and women's sports day a lot of it a big event over the devaney center earlier today she'll have highlights of that coming up in the second hour our sports highly hotline brought to you by woodhouse where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime 18 brands, a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Since 1993, Dakota Mac has offered fixed long-term ag real estate loans perfect for any stage of life. The rebellious 15-year loan. The here for laundry 20-year loan and the 30-year loan who thinks they can tell you a thing or two about parenting. Whatever your needs, trust Dakota Mac with your legacy. Hi, it's Nick Reno from Dakota Mac. Please call me at 308-380-7564 to learn all about our competitive rates on ag real estate loans. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com donate. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Shelly has the ball, going to drive, delivers deep left side, Sam Hyde alone for three, you betcha! Hey Oscar fans, tune in tomorrow for an evening full of Nebraska basketball. Fred Hoiberg makes an appearance in studio from 6 to 7 p.m. for the Nebraska men's basketball show on Sports Nightly. Then at 7 p.m., Matt Coatney and Jeff Creech will be on the call as the women's basketball team takes on Michigan State. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red!
Good evening. I'm Greg Sharp. Our sports checker tonight brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Today was National Signing Day, and the Huskers added five more high school senior student athletes to the 2023 class. That makes it for a total of 39, 11 of those 39 being transfer portal additions. Coach Rural talked about what he likes about this class. As you're out there in the world and people say, oh, Nebraska, you know, it's, it's, it can, you, you, know you can find big, strong guys. Can you find speed? Like, just in state, you're not going to find anybody faster than Malachi and, and Jalen. You know, I mean, the speed's there. You know, Bryce Turner's as fast a kid as there is in the country. Um, so I, I like that part of it. Uh, but I like each player for who they are. I like, I like the, you know, I first got here, I think the previous staff did a really good job with the big guys, the old linemen. Um, and then you guys kind of know I'm, I'm going to kind of be numbers based, you know, like, like when I don't know, I, I do know that track times and triple jumps and 40 yard dashes, that, that doesn't mean you're a great football player. But when I'm not sure, those things guide you, right? They're just, they're just, they're just uh, a rock that you can kind of lean on. And so when I see a kid who's a 47 foot triple jumper and, you know, likes football, I'm going to take a chance on them. And so if they have the right mental. And um, so I like, I like some of those things that we were able to, to bring in. Um, I you know, had a lot of success over the years bringing guys in who are fast and finding the right position. And so uh, for us to increase our team speed, I'm not saying the previous team was slow, but just to bring in that level of speed to me is, is really important. And then we brought in some size and, uh, um, you know, O-linemen are, O-linemen, you have to grow them. You know, it takes a little time with them. They have to get in the weight room. But I like the group that we brought in. Tickets went on sale today for the spring game for the general public. Mid-afternoon, over 30,000 have been sold for the game on April the 22nd. Tampa Bay quarterback Tom Brady announced this morning via a video he is retiring. Brady, who's won seven Super Bowls, thanked his family, teammates, and competitors for an incredible ride. Brady first retired last March, only to reverse course, and was part of Tampa's playoff appearance this past season. On the hardwood tonight, a pair of Big Ten men's games. Purdue all over Penn State, 66-48. They're getting late in that game in West Lafayette. And here in about 30 minutes, Minnesota is at Rutgers. On the women's side, Ohio State 34, Wisconsin 18, mid-second quarter. Indiana, Minnesota just tipping off. The 1890 Initiative, helping Husker student-athletes navigate name, image, and likeness. To learn more or donate, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for another night of Sports Highly here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Meyer, another three. This one's not good. The rebound and a great block out by Greasel. Vandermel's got the ball. Four to nothing run to start the second half. Wilcher drives the basketball, splits a double. Oh, what a play! Wilcher, what a fantabulous play! There's our play of the game. Wow, what a finish by C.J. Wilcher. And the first time tonight, the crowd is on their feet. A little 6-0 run to start the second half. Kaiser, left low block, guarded by Stewart. Knock away and a steal for Kendall Moriarty. Here come the Huskers with 106 to go in the second quarter. There it is. Trailing by 11. Three ball, on East Stewart all alone. You! Betcha! Off the steal and assist from Kendall Moriarty. Timeout, Kim barnes And here come the Husker crowd. To Jazz Shelley. Throw it back. Jazz has a double team. Throws it deep left side. Callan Hake for three. You! Betcha! Riesel bring it across the timeline. How about a couple of quick baskets here? Down 10. Deep left corner, Jamarcus Lawrence. Three. Got it! Nothing but that swishola of CBA three for Jamarcus Lawrence. At top, Hybe has it. Huskers looking for a road win over a top five team. Hybe driving and scoring down the left lane line. That was classic Sam Hybe. Yeah, good pace by Sammy Nebraska answers. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. Hour number two here of Sports Nightly. It was a big day around here. Of course, we talked a lot about National Signing Day, and it was also National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Of course, we've talked a lot over the last year. We're in the midst of a year-long celebration of the 50th anniversary of Title IX. And so this morning, 
morning actually had an incredible event here on National Girls and Women in Sports Day, bringing together women from across the athletics department, donors, sponsors, we had coaches, student athletes, um, former student athletes, and, and all kinds of women that have been really instrumental in paving the way and laying the foundation of where we are today in women's sports. And so, wanted to bring you this panel that we were able to have today with Husker head coaches from programs here at Nebraska. Jeannie Sutherland, the head coach for Nebraska women's golf. Lisa Hart, the associate head coach for Nebraska women's tennis. Mindy Miles, who has been a guest here on Sports Nightly recently, the head coach for Nebraska Rifle. Amy Williams, of course, head coach for Nebraska women's basketball, and Rhonda Ravel, head coach for Nebraska softball. So here is just a fascinating conversation, a round table with these incredible Husker women head coaches. Joining me now on stage from my, I guess, right to left, we have Nebraska women's basketball head coach, Amy Williams, Nebraska softball head coach, Rhonda Ravel, head coach of Nebraska rifle, Mindy Miles, Nebraska golf head coach Jeannie Sutherland, and the associate head coach for Nebraska women's tennis, Lisa Hart. I got to thank everybody for submitting your questions for the panel here today. Unfortunately, we won't have time to get to all of them, but I am going to pocket them and ask them later on and for future interviews, so we appreciate that. All right, well, one of the questions we got a lot of was wanting to know how you got into coaching and why. Who and what inspired you to want to become a head coach? Amy, we'll let you start. Well, I wanted to become a head coach pretty much because my dad was a head coach and my whole life I went to the gym with him um, but when I came to Nebraska I was a biology and math double major and thought I was going to med school and was doing an internship at St. Elizabeth's Hospital and just did not want to go to the hospital every day for the rest of my life and um, I had a really good mentor in Teresa Becker who was one of my assistant coaches here at Nebraska that uh, I spent a lot of time consulting with and um, she helped me kind of see uh, where my passions really lied and that it was okay for me to take a step back and want to impact people the same way that the, my coaches have been able to impact me and, and to pursue a profession that is a little unstable at times but um, certainly quite rewarding. Well, I'm a little bit pre-Title IX, so my start in coaching was as a nine-year-old. My dad played fast pitch softball his team was a little bit, they passed, pre, they passed the Title IX passage before the law did because they allowed me to be called a bat girl versus a bat boy. And before every game, I submitted a lineup to the manager because I was already writing lineups as a nine-year-old. So I think that's when my coaching started. I later was able to convince my father to become a coach. So I grew up, too, in the home of a coach, and that inspired me to stay with it. Wait, is it on? Do I press a button? Sorry. <laughs> um, I actually became a assistant coach first. Um, I was invited to join the Nebraska's team as um, with a previous head coach. Um, I was still competing, and she knew I needed some support there, and knew that I could make a big impact on the team here. So I joined as an assistant, and when she decided to leave for bigger and better things academically, um, I knew that this program needed a strong leader to take it up to the next level, and I knew that the department had the potential to support us in the way that we needed to grow the program. So I didn't intend to get into coaching, but here we are, and we're making it work. Hi everybody, thanks for coming today. Um, I started out as a teacher and I quickly realized that when I taught golf I had a lot more attention than when I taught English. So, um, so I, I taught school for two years and coached basketball and decided that I would prefer to be in golf 100% and so um, I had a phenomenal college coach, Jeanette Marsh, at Northern Iowa, and she was a phenomenal person first, but she was also a great role model, and I think she inspired me to start coaching instead of just teaching golf, so 
and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Um, to be honest, I kind of fell into it. I was um, an elementary education major here at Nebraska, and right when I was getting ready to graduate, our assistant was leaving, and Coach Jacobson asked if I wanted to give coaching a try. And so I jumped at that opportunity, and after a couple weeks, just knew I was meant to do that. So I've been doing it ever since. Um, so I owe a lot of um, uh, influence. He influenced me immensely. So. That's my story. So I'll ask you guys a couple or some questions one at a time so we can get to as many as possible. Jeannie, we'll start with you. What's the biggest change or improvement you've seen in women's athletics since you've been coaching? Since I've been coaching, I started in 92. Um, our, our budget has, my first budget was 30,000 and that included my salary. So <laughs> that'll probably tell you a lot. Um, so the budget that we have to work with really allows us to give our players opportunities to play great place, uh, great golf courses and to have the proper equipment and to uh, be personalized with what we do for our players where we can be individual. We don't have to give them all uh, the driver that we got from for free from a company. So I would say, and I, I hate for it to be about money, but the budget is hugely important for our success. And so it's been really wonderful to see that go up every year that I've coached and now be significant. I feel like it's significant, so thank you. Lisa, have you seen a specific event or situation that has impacted the tennis program specifically from Title IX? Um, I think just recently we found out that we will get to um, fly on a charter to Ohio State and Penn State. Um, and that's probably because our administration and university is so wonderful as well. But when, back when I was playing, I could never imagine even such a thing. So um, I would say that is the most memorable right now. <laughs> Mindy, how have your experiences of being a woman in sport shaped how you approach other areas of your life? Um, well, I won't hold it against y'all, but not many people know we have a rifle program. Um, so rifle is co-ed, and we have a women's team. So I was also uh, competed on a women's team. So competing against men, knowing I'd do that in college, I never really considered a separate. I mean, we do internationally and for national competitions do for the Olympic side of things, but I never held myself back comparing to men. Um, women are actually a, usually a little bit better at our sport. So I knew I was comparing myself to the best of the best when we were looking at our women's teams. And um, I guess leading into life, I've never really shied against, shied away from my interactions with men or been intimidated when I've walked in. I know like there's better people here than me. I'm used to comparing myself and I'm comfortable with that. I know where I need to go to improve myself. So I've always looked at strong leaders and gone after that, not necessarily male, female. And my sport has been very impactful in that way. Amy, we might have some parents in the room who might want some advice uh, for their young daughters who want to be great athletes. What advice would you give? And also, should they specialize? Do you appreciate, you have daughters that play lots of different sports and excel in different sports. So do you recommend playing multiple sports as well? Well, um, clearly I'm a huge advocate of multi-sport athletes. My oldest daughter was fortunate enough in her sophomore season to win a state championship as a starting shortstop and leadoff hitter in softball and play in a state championship game of basketball and then be a state semifinalist and the starting left wing on her high school soccer team. So uh, she's, she's played, um, had a lot of success and played them all. But I think the big thing that I love about um, multi-sport athletes is that they're usually not maxed out by the time they get to me. And um, we usually don't see quite as much burnout from the kids that were early specializing, you know, in junior high and all they've done and all they've known year round since they were 
10 years old, it's just basketball, basketball, basketball. And sometimes by the time they get to us, they're, they're starting to be a little fried from that. So that's one of the big reasons that I um, really am a proponent of multi-sport athletes. But I do feel like every situation is different for every kid. And if you want to peak a little earlier, sometimes making that choice to specialize at the right time makes sense for some students. But um, as a parent, uh, we've just been really supportive of our kids um, being able to do it all, try it all. And our youngest daughter, you know, she's in Minecraft Club. <laughs> Who even knew that was a thing, right? And so um, I am just as excited and supportive of her going to her flute choir or her Minecraft club as we are of our oldest daughter who's um, playing softball and soccer and excelling in all the sports. And I think just as anything you can um, get them involved in and be supportive of and um, let them know they're bigger than their performances is important. All right, for you, Rhonda, what is the most difficult part of being a leader? Well, first of all, I'm among so many great leaders that I'd love to pass the mic and spend all day listening to that answer. I think with leadership, you know, if you're motivated by service, which my guess is, is that so many of you are, that you understand the great blessing and responsibility that comes with leadership. And the calling that you've been, that has been bestowed upon you now, I think in order to answer that call and to answer that call to the highest honor is you have to remember what is your true north. And for everybody, it's different. For me, it's my faith. And it's important that I keep my vessel clean enough and stay close enough and stay connected enough to what drives me each and every day so I can be led, so then in hopes that I can do the honorable thing as I lead others. Love it. All right, got a couple more that I want all of you to answer, so we'll start with Amy on this end, and then we'll come back the other way for the second one. Uh, so what was the most meaningful moment, what has been the most meaningful moment of your career? Should I have started on the other end? <laughs> Probably. Um, I can go. Want me to? I have two things in the spirit of Title IX. Um, I was able, I think we'd be remiss to not mention Dr. Barbara Hibner today, uh, a great Title IX advocate. I was able to, uh, and I know this might sound a little morbid, but it's one of my greatest memories, and then I have another one. I was able to help her with her sister's cajoling to help her pass from this life to the next life. I was at her bedside when she did that. And it was a great honor for me to do that because she had done so much for me. The second thing is, I just forgot it because I was going to tell you that one. Oh, the second thing, she's right in front of me, was officiating the wedding of former student athletes. Uh, and then finally, it's just helping them grow, helping them grow. <laughs> well, I'm still young in my coaching career. Um, but I can tell you a few points that I have been very proud of. Um, I love when my student athletes open up to me and when I can give that opportunity to them and they take it. Um, I've had one student athlete graduate and in her speech she mentioned, um, I was getting my master's at the time and just finished up and she said, oh, you know, my coach was a role model during that time and how much she's worked and that hard work that I've seen like, that was very touching and really just seeing them excel on the range in the classroom and they're so impressive with everything they have and all the things they juggle. I mean it's even more than I was when I was an athlete and it wasn't that long ago. Um, but they are just so impressive and they bring it every day and they're lovely ladies and their personalities and their loving hearts. I just it's amazing. It's very fulfilling to be their coach. Well, I'm, I don't have a great memory, so mine is from last week. <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to take a training trip with the team to Houston, and I got to introduce my team now to uh, some of my former players, my, my Aggies, who I had coached in the 90s and uh, early 2000s, and they spoke to my team about success and 
uh, the process, being in the moment, enjoying yourself, uh, living it up for these four years as a golfer because they're all having to earn a living now. And um, it was just really wonderful for me to sit back and let them do the talking and the coaching and to, to sort of just be with my team now and see the connections. It doesn't matter what school it is. They're all female who are very successful, who use golf as the way to get to what they wanted. So it was really fun. I think for me, it's um, watching freshmen come in and all the development and growth that happens in those four years, four or five years. And then when they graduate, um, they're just completely different people on the court and in, in their lives. And it's just so memorable and um, rewarding to be just a small part of it. So I just, I love watching that growth. Did you think of one? <laughs> I, mean, I, can, <laughs> I can come up with a hundred uh, most memorable moments, but really it boils down to just um, the, the smiles. And I have pictures on my walls of the smiles on my players' faces in big moments. And every one of my most memorable moments, I can just, it's like a snapshot of watching those young women have joy doing what they love to do. All right, so we don't have to pass it back down again. We'll just start with you again. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of questions, too, on how can we continue to grow and improve and, and push for equality in women's sports? What are some areas that we can continue to, to do that? Uh, I think the, the best way is to continue to make young women feel valued. And that can happen in a lot of different ways. Investing time, you know, it's incredibly um, empowering and makes our kid, young women feel valued when we show up and there's 8,000 people there to support our team. Just, just showing up for them um, continues to be a way. And, and, you know, value comes in a lot of different ways. When you are feeling valued and free to dream big, most amazing things happen. I was so happy that Carmen brought up Billy Winsett and Angela Mercario because every recruit we ever bring to Nebraska, we walk them through and just brag, brag about those people, the, the young women. It's not everybody knows kind of that Nebraska leads the nation in academic All-Americans, but all the top 10 award winners. And how about two NCAA Women Female Athletes of the Year? That's incredible. It's incredible. There's two, like I think it's incredible if one of my athletes is the best um, student athlete on my team because my team is full of amazing, bright, talented. And then not to mention the, the most celebrated student athlete at Nebraska because of all of the other incredibly talented young women that we have here at Nebraska. But 250,000 NCAA women's athletes in the country and you're the best? Like, it blows my mind. You wanna talk about dream big. And that's what the people here at Nebraska help our athletes do is to feel valued and free to dream big. And I think continuing to do that and value, yes, it does come, like Jeannie mentioned, in dollars. I mean, continuing to invest in our sports. And, you know, I know the teams that were blessed to make the Sweet 16 in men's basketball one year ago spent 67% more money on their teams that, than they did on their women's teams, okay? So we still have some work to, to, to be able to put the value where the dollars are, but it's not, I mean, that's a big part of it, is continuing to close that gap and invest the dollars there, but um, investing in our female athletes can come in a lot of different ways, and I think we do it great here at Nebraska, um, but across the board, um, continuing to do that and raise the bar um, is the best thing we can do. There's that commercial so that we're, says... So we're going to cut it off a little short here. It was just a fantastic event. The Huskers brunch and bringing together women from all sports across here at Nebraska. I love what Coach Williams said there. You got a chance to go out and support the women tomorrow, and then we are still making a push for that February 18th game against Iowa to sell out Pinnacle Bank Arena. I did want to note, too, uh, Jeannie Sutherland, the women's golf head coach, went on to say when I asked her about, you know, what can continue to be done, and, and she talked about putting more sports on television, 
put the rifle, put a rifle uh, competition on the Big Ten Network and put a women's golf Big Ten Championship on the Big Ten Network. And so Trev Alberts was there in attendance, and he actually stood up and said that was one thing that Kevin Warren did when he was putting together this TV package, all these different outlets and, and media entities, is to be able to put more Olympic sports on television. So that's coming. That is coming. That is so great to hear that we are going to be able to see a lot of these women's sports more represented on coverage across all of our TV and streaming platforms. So excited. Cannot wait for that. Uh, we had two different panels, the coaches panel there and then a student athlete panel. We're going to hear a little bit coming up here in a little bit from Lindsay Krause, who was a part of it. Um, I will put these panels together on a podcast. And so you can be able to go back and listen if you missed any of it or want to hear the full um, full panels from both of these uh, student athletes and coaches panels they were it was so inspiring and I was so thankful to get to be a part of it and and so awesome again that here at Nebraska we do put such a big emphasis on women's sports all right we got to take a our first break here of our number two so we got lots more to come here on our celebration of national girls and women in sports day buckle up and put the phone down a reminder from the NDOT highway safety office while some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. My husband and I love to live in Nebraska. It's the good life. We always vacation here. Love those Nebraska state parks. We love to eat here. Where are you going to get a better steak? And we love to play here, especially Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It has a $50,000 starting jackpot, drawing seven days a week, and all the proceeds go back to our state. Hey, honey, this weekend, let's buy some Nebraska Pick 5 tickets, go to a state park, and grill some steaks. Like our first date. <laughs> I'm no amateur. Top prize odds, one in 501,000. Shelly has the ball, going to drive, delivers deep left side, Sam Hybe alone for three, you betcha! Hey Oscar fans, tune in tomorrow for an evening full of Nebraska basketball. Fred Hoiberg makes an appearance in studio from 6 to 7 p.m. for the Nebraska men's basketball show on Sports Nightly. Then at 7 p.m., Matt Cotney and Jeff Grish will be on the call as the women's basketball team takes on Michigan State. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red! Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Cornerstone Bank proudly serves Nebraska with a full line of loan and deposit products. Cornerstone is large enough to handle all of your financial needs while offering the personal service you deserve and the local decision-making you expect from a family-owned community bank. Stop in or call one of the Cornerstone Bank locations near you to discover the Cornerstone difference. Bank on a solid foundation. Cornerstone Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Loan subject to approval. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The thoughtfully redesigned 2023 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance, more than Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. The 2023 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information from manufacturer websites as of June 2022. Duto Subaru in Lincoln and DutoSubaru.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. For the fifth straight year, the University of Nebraska system is a top 100 patent earning institution. NU system researchers were granted 43 patents in 2021, with UNL researchers named as inventors on 25 of these patents. Husker patents include three projects with partners at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and six patents for a surgical robot developed by faculty in the College of Engineering. Pickup truck, sports car, motorcycle, minivan. 
Townhouse, two-story, farmhouse, fixer-upper. What you drive and where you live is different for everyone. So it's important to have insurance that fits your needs and is just right for you. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that. Which is why our agents help you design a comprehensive auto, home, and life insurance plan. Insurance that fits just right. See Shelter Agent Josh Aarons in Kearney, Scott Vermas in La Vista, or Dennis Malloy in Bellevue today. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow, bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of these 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. 402-413-2400. Carla sent us a text on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline and said, if I do remember cor correctly, we were the first to have bowling broadcasted. I nominate Nebraska to be the first to have an NCAA rifle event on TV. So we were the first to have bowling on the Big Ten. And, and Trev actually mentioned that today that we have the highest rated bowling broadcast the Big Ten Network has ever had. But they had great response. The Big Ten Network loved putting bowling on TV. It was a great event. And so hopefully they'll continue to do that. But bowling has been on ESPN. I think their, their championships has. But we were, definitely were the first on the Big Ten Network. And, yeah, I agree. Let's be the first rifle. Let's be the first everything. Let's always be the first. I love, I love that. So uh, we also wanted to bring you a special sneak peek of the latest place episode of course our series that give you the behind the scenes stories here at the University of Nebraska this is my by far my favorite episode that has been put together so far it's absolutely incredible it's almost 20 minutes long but we're going to play you a short clip of it here it's going to be um, it's going to I guess be dropped tomorrow 5 30 on all of our Huskers uh, all of our Husker social and YouTube channels. So stay tuned for that, but did want to give you a sneak peek of it here as we celebrate National Girls and Women in Sports Day. This episode features that trailblazers and women who have paved the way and laid the foundation for us to be here where we are today. So here is a sneak preview of The Place brought to you by Bridges Trust. How did you, like when the recruiting process started, because you said, again, there weren't a lot of opportunities, so how did that unfold where you thought, oh, I can play college for this, I can get my degree for this? Yeah, I wanted to play at the international level, and the step at that point was you had to go to college, and you had to go to a top school, you had to go to a program that was competitive, um, and Nebraska was it. I mean, there were a couple other schools I remember coming on my recruiting trip, and it was just like, this is it. Like, I want to be an Olympian one day, and this is how I get there. I always knew that I would end up bowling collegiately. This was my goal. This was my dream school, actually. Growing up, I was like, wow, I want to be a Cornhusker. So that was always the goal moving forward. I actually grew up watching Husker women's basketball and admiring uh, lots of Husker athletes. Honestly, um, I wanted to leave home. I was a first-generation college student, and um, I wanted to leave and kind of experience something new and kind of write my own story. But when it boiled down to some um, variables for me, I just felt like Nebraska offered an experience that nobody else could really afford me. I remember getting an email from the University of Nebraska. So we looked it up and it turned out like Priscilla Lope Schleep, she is a former Canadian hurdler. And I was like, oh, I know her, she went to Nebraska. So then that kind of got the wheels turning and I was like, okay, let me give Nebraska a chance, let me go check it out. And as soon as I came here, I was like, this is unlike any other program. I think um, what makes Nebraska special in general is our community. 
when as a woman, you know, you have other people returning that support of your dream and your opportunity, it just makes it even more impactful. Being from Nebraska, I know what Nebraska's bred, right? Like we, we hear a lot about uh, football and, and other sports. To have that same support returned by your community, I think is, is really, really special. I look at, you know, when I played, we, we packed the Coliseum pretty well, you know, about four or 5,000 people a game. It was tight, it was awesome. I keep saying, people say, why Nebraska? Because you step out on game day of football and you're like, wow, you can't explain it, you just have to be there. And then it was the same thing for soccer, it was the same thing for volleyball, it was the same thing for basketball. To see the Devaney Center filled, you know, from the bottom to the top and kids waiting in line, you know, an hour and a half to two hours for autographs. I had a very unique experience. It, it, it is very hard to put into words, but just kind of being the hometown kid, you know, I was the only kid on the roster from Lincoln at the time. All the love and the support from the community. I don't think you see that anywhere else in the country because you don't see it really at the professional level. I think Nebraska could be an example to literally the whole nation on like how to support women's sports because volleyball games, I remember having to stand at volleyball games because like that you couldn't get a seat there. It was packed, it was sold out. Um, we had people at our track meets, like being a female student athlete here and knowing you have that fan support that is. Uh, yeah, that, that goes a really long way because it shows like not only am I invested in this, but like this community is backing me. Like, you know there's going to be like a little girl in the stands that is watching you and wants to do what you do one day. Like that just gives you a whole other perspective on how you approach your sport. And I think that's so important. Young youth in our community to be able to see young women um, do great things in their sport, but also be able to do great things outside of their sport. Um, and I think it just, success breeds success, right? Like that community of like, we raise them up, we breed them in, you know, bring them in and give them these opportunities. Um, and then it just kind of continues to build from there. There's something about being here and being surrounded by like-minded people where you, when you step into a place and you're like, it feels right. I know the coaches will challenge me. I know my teammates will, will challenge me, but they'll also support me. The facilities, the resources, like as a, soccer player, a female soccer player, when I came to Nebraska, those resources were f available to buy few. And to step into here and to see a female athlete be celebrated, a female athlete get resources that the men get, that's when you're like, okay, you know what? I have all the tools here to be successful and if I fail, that's on me. Because everything I've been given has set me up to be successful. All of the resources you have are here and I think, um, like academically, you have all the support you can need. I think with the life skills, like I mentioned before, that was really the catalyst for me to get involved in the community. And without that, I wouldn't have like found that confidence within myself to go out and find my own opportunities. I had every resource I could have asked for to succeed here. If you take advantage of the resources that are here, you will succeed. When I came to Nebraska, I was allowed to play with people that just love to play, and that's what women did. There wasn't a pro league. There was nothing professional, monetary, facilities that why people played. We played because we loved the sport. And nothing gives you more reality check than going into your senior year, realizing there's no professional anything at the end of this, right? Like, you have a finite amount of time, and maybe your freshman year, four years seem like forever, but as a senior going into your last year, you're like, this, this is what I got, right? Like, this is the time I'm gonna make the most of it. So Boise, right, we go into Boise and we're kind of going through the, the different events and I'm just focused on like, I just got to do my part to get the team there. Like at the end of floor, like I had no idea. I had no idea that I had like even been in that, in that case. For the first time in Nebraska gymnastics history, a Husker had won the all around national championship. Ran to my coaches, hugged my coaches. It's still at that moment, it, it's just, it just was surreal. Like, it, I, I don't know how else to explain it other than you're like, it's just the cherry on top of, of everything. All right, again, that is a little sneak preview of the next episode of The Place Not Owned, Earned is the title of this one featuring 
Tremendous stories from all these incredible women that, you know, helped pave the way and were among the first and did so many incredible things competing for the Huskers. So that, again, will drop tomorrow, 5.30 on YouTube and our social media ch channels. So stay tuned for that. Again, Corn Crib, our digital crew, knocked it out of the park. I highly recommend watching that one. All right, got to work in another break here on Sports Nightly on this National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Coming up next, we're going to hear from a couple of student athletes. So buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. From the University of Nebraska Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. UNL has been awarded over $14 million by the U.S. Department of Commerce to expand robotics research and teaching spaces, part of a $25 million award given to the state of Nebraska to advance robotics research. The funding will allow the university to educate and train the next generation of Nebraska workers, entrepreneurs, and innovators for careers of the future. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? I <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Your story, it lives in River City where you can enjoy a metropolitan vibe and a small town feel, where we set the standard for service and looking out for one another, where there's so much more than steak in our thriving food scene. Your story is the story of Omaha, told by those who live it and love it. 
whether that's helping you keep up with the Cornhuskers or creating the content you crave. And here in the Omaha World Herald is where it comes to life. Omaha World Herald, where your story lives. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. All right. We also had a student athlete panel at the event this morning at the Huskers brunch, and Lindsey Krause, volleyball from Nebraska Volleyball, was a part of that panel, and she is so impressive. I, I loved having she's one of my favorite interviews on campus. I love it when she's here in studio and, and actually. Actually, Coach Cook was asked this question, who has the most unique personalities on the team? Lindsay and Becca Alec were two of the, the athletes that he named last year during one of his coaches' shows. So, um, so many great things to take away from this panel. I, we don't have time to air all of it here on this show, but I will post it, I promise, on our podcast platform so you can listen to the entire panel. But did want to bring you this story. The question was asked to our student athletes, what made you want to get involved in sports? What led you to participate in the sport that you're participating in now? And here was Lindsay Krause's answer. The first distinct memory that I have of volleyball and more specifically the Nebraska volleyball team and the culture we have in this program is I have this like memory ingrained in my brain. I was like eight years old. Uh, it was 2011 sitting in my living room watching the Nebraska volleyball team. It was like Lauren Cook, Gina Mancuso, Hannah Wirth. And seeing that they were ranked like number four in the ABCA poll, and I remember turning to my mom and be like, "We're good." Like I had no idea, and she she told me like, "Yes, we've been good forever. We've always been good. We've never not been good." And that is when it almost like clicked in my brain of like, I don't know if I'm gonna be like, I don't know if I'm gonna play Nebraska, but I'm going to be that good. I, I'm going to play somewhere that has that program. I'm going to play somewhere that has that culture, um, no matter what sport I'm playing, because at that point I thought that I was going to be in the WNBA, but that uh, life has taken me down a different path. But I remember um, it was that moment in my mind that it clicked of just like, I'm going to leave that legacy somewhere. And just all those women that played at that time growing up when I was younger just have such an impact on me. I just love that story and wanted to share that with our listeners. All right. I went a little long on those two previous segments, so we got to work in our final break here of hour number two. The Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. With 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Back to wrap up the show, coming up next. Nebraska women's basketball offers one of the best values in all of Husker sports with single game reserve tickets at Pinnacle Bank Arena for just $15. Adult general admission seating is just $10, while youth and senior general admission tickets are $5. Children six and under are just a buck. Plans now to bring your whole family to Husker women's basketball for Big Ten home games in January and February. Get your tickets and the full schedule at Huskers.com. Your story, it lives in the capital city, where we take Nebraska nice to another level, and we always show up for Go Big Red. In your story, a pioneering spirit has built a community that cares. Your story is the story of Lincoln, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's breaking news from the capital or sending you to the best shows in town, and here in the Lincoln Journal Star is where it comes to life. Lincoln Journal Star, where your story lives. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. 
kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High Bee stores where right now kids can eat free. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Come support the women's basketball team as we pack PBA on February 18th against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Join the Omaha World Herald, Lincoln Journal star, Husker Extra, and Bex Hybrids in helping the Nebraska, Nebraska women's basketball team pack PBA. Coach Williams and the Huskers want you there to give them a home court advantage against the Iowa Hawkeyes on February 18th. Purchase your tickets at Huskers.com. That is the sellout game, folks, so let's get it done. Let's make it happen for the very first time. As we're celebrating women's sports and talking about the first and these women that paved the way, let's do something that's never been done here in Lincoln and sell out PBA for Nebraska women's basketball games. Again, coming up February 18th against Iowa. It's going to be a big game for this program anyways as uh, they head towards the postseason. So let's make it happen and make it an incredible atmosphere for those ladies. But you have a chance to see these ladies in action before then, starting tomorrow against Michigan State. Uh, 7.30 tip for that. We will have pregame starting at 7 o'clock tomorrow. So you can, um, yeah, check out the women tomorrow, 7.30. Michigan State, big big game for them as they uh, continue to put this resume together to uh, get punch a ticket into the postseason. We will have one hour of sports nightly tomorrow. Coach Hoiberg will check in, and uh, Greg Sharp will be here. We'll be here for uh, an hour before we hand things off to Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish over inside Pinnacle Bank Arena. Well, uh, it's been a fun hour. Thank you guys for tuning in. Stephen Bellevue sent us a text on our text line that said, loved every moment of the last hour. I appreciate that. And, you know, I've been here for a year and a half now, and it's one of my favorite things. I love a lot of things about Nebraska, but one of my favorite things, certainly at the top of the list, is the way our Husker fans support our Husker student athletes. I mean, it is absolutely incredible that you guys care to hear from them, from our coaches, from our student athletes, that you show up and support them in ways that you don't see across the country. So, again, on National Girls and Women in Sports Day as we celebrate and honor how far we've come over the last 50 years, but also how far we will continue to go. Certainly Nebraska and the fans here set the trend and, and set the mark, the benchmark of what fan bases across the country should be doing for their female student athletes. So thank you guys for listening over the last hour. Appreciate it. Uh, again, it's, it's been an incredible day. The Huskers event was so neat. We had women from all across the athletics, the athletics department here at Nebraska, but also student athletes. We had uh, Jazz Shelley was there again. They're preparing. They had practice, so they came and then went to practice. And uh, you know, Courtney Wallace, Gold Glove winner, coming back for Nebraska softball captain. A lot of the the Husker student athletes were in attendance as well, and then uh, a lot of the trailblazers and and women pioneers that laid the foundation the women whose shoulders that we stand upon still today were there so it was neat to all gather all the generations come together and celebrate national girls and women in sports day i love this day i love that we take the day to celebrate and honor our female student athletes because they have had to fight uh, uh, and to get to the place that they're in and and Boy, they have had tremendous success here at Nebraska, and we continue to support them and do what we can to showcase them and give them a platform right here on our Huskers radio network. All right, thank you guys so much again for listening. Thanks to Greg for letting me take over here over the last hour. Cole Hartman back there running the show for us. It was just him and I here in the studio over the last hour, so appreciate him running the show for us. And, and thanks to everyone for making this day possible today, and thank you guys again for listening. All right, we got Nebraska women's basketball tomorrow against Michigan State, 7.30, 7 o'clock pregame show, but we'll be here for an hour of sports nightly starting at 6 o'clock. Thank you again so much for listening. Happy National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Have a great night, Husker Nation. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're a fan, you wear your team's jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. After a win, your world glistens. Lose, and the hurt permeates your soul. 
You'll always have a place with us in the Cox Fan Zone, where everyone can play and connect with other fans in a big group hug. See, in the Fan Zone, you're not some crazy fan. You are home. Hey, Husker fans, this is Greg Sharp, voice of the Huskers. Say Fan Zone into your contour voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit cox.com slash fan zone. Go Huskers. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. 